Today I'm going to teach you how to make this graphite drawing or pencil drawing of mushrooms. Look how cool they look. Yeah, and then you can look and see the little details from our pencil lines. This is all pencil and erasers, and I'm very excited. So let's get started. Well, I'm excited to get back to doing graphite or pencil drawings with you. Um, so we're gonna use some of the style that we have in the past, and here we go. So here's my piece of paper. It's an eight by 10 piece of paper, and I have taped it to another piece of paper. And then I found the corner of my paper under my tape so that I can measure the full distance from here to here to get the midpoints of the paper, not the midpoints of the window that's left open after I've taped. So just to be clear, you wanna go from the midpoints on the paper. And so I have a midpoint here, 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 and here. And then I've drawn some helping lines uh, think of it like a compass, north, south, east, and west helping lines. And that way you can find your way around as we're drawing things. So for instance, the first part that I'm going to draw is going to start about halfway between this corner and this corner right here's halfway. And so I'm going to start a little line about there. So just like a little hook kind of right there. And it's going to cross my southern helping line, like about there. Now, it's gonna be moss, because mushrooms like to grow in moist, dark places, uh, damp places, the forest floor, and then it's gonna end below our easter line, easterly line right there. Um, and so it's gonna have a bunch of little mossy bits here. It's not gonna be extremely well in focus, so you're just gonna kinda Change up the direction. A few loop de loos are kind of fun. Just kind of. All right, see? Kind of think random, almost like a language. All right. Isn't that fun? Look at that. Oh, that's great. I'm very excited about that. Okay. So, random is harder than it looks. So, if you first do it and you're like, everything looks exactly like this, um, just try to mix it up a little bit. Maybe practice on, on your tape, on another paper, kind of just kind of being like, oh, backwards, forwards. Ah, try to, try to loosen yourself up. And so, if you find where you're starting, the middle point, and where you're ending, then you can be like, whoo. Uh, and don't worry if you get this too low or too tall. The interesting part of the mushrooms is all going to happen up here. Um, so this is just kind of like the supporting actor of moss down there. So we've got that in position. Now we can locate our mushroom caps way over here. And so here's the edge of my paper. We're going to skip a gap for that. Going to skip another gap and another skip. So I'm three portions away from that so that I can kind of put a little kind of upward part there. And then it's going to follow this line. So that'll be over there. So that's the farthest to the left that one of our mushrooms will be. And then we're just going to finish him out. He is in the back. He's the big guy in the back. So he's going to have, so here's my plus sign here in the middle. And so the rest of him is going to happen just to the right here, be about there. Okay. So there's going to be other stuff here and here and here, but this is the big guy and he's a lot of fun too. I am very excited about him. All right. So he's going to be there and then we're not actually going to see the top of him, but I imagine that the top of him would be about here. Um, and he's not symmetrical. So this is going to be gently going down to there. And this one's going to be going like to there. So very gently we make that mark. So we find out where he is in space. And then to the left, his stem will be coming. Uh, let's find the distance between here. Let's create the negative space here. So the negative space here just above this moss is going to create little bit of see it's kind of a right triangle see how it's a long see this right triangle shape right here that is a right triangle if you math people are there you will be like yes it is um, and that is where 
the rightmost part of his stem goes, and it just crosses the line a little bit. And then this is a very close-up picture of a mushroom. So we're gonna go over a little, just a tiny bit more than a centimeter. And that stays chunky all the way down. Okay, so we don't want it to get narrower down here. Uh, we want it to kind of be about the same. So it almost looks parallel like that, okay? So we found its location. Um, and we're gonna come back and do all kinds of details on him. We just needed him partially in place so we can find everybody else, okay? And I'm gonna take my precision eraser and erase out that little square that I put to represent that that was a right triangle. The reason I'm gonna erase that is because the next mushroom makes an even tinier, itty bitty right triangle right there with its stem. And so this is gonna keep coming and it will make what looks like a rectangle. This is not a mushroom. This is the space between the mushrooms, okay? So don't get confused and start being like, mushroom. No, so I'm just gonna put an X there. I'm gonna leave it for a while so that you know that is not a mushroom, that is in between a mushroom, okay? So that'll be that distance. And then we're gonna go a little farther this way. And then let's do go parallel for this, this one. So this, this is the next mushroom stem. So it's gonna come down and it doesn't matter how high or how short your moss is, make sure that this comes to your moss and it's in the moss, so you'll see no stems down here. It's always gonna be just right behind this moss. It'll be lovely, okay? And so now, we already talked about how we won't be able to see this point. That's because there's gonna be a mushroom kind of like here. So this one's in the very back, and then this is the big sister mushroom kind of tall up. And so this stem's gonna keep heading in that direction, that direction. See how it's at an angle? That's why this is a right triangle, because it's gonna keep going that way. This one's gonna keep going that way, and you'll stop when you just get past that north line. See how it puts it right about there? This is a tall one. Farthest back, biggest one. This is the tallest one. And we're not gonna be able to see stuff going this way on this mushroom, but we're gonna see quite a lot going this way. So as this goes over here, we will see another negative space that looks like a greater than sign. Also, not the mushroom, but we want to see that space because it makes it way more interesting than if it's not there, okay? And then we want to find the point of the mushroom near the top. So I would say, if you were looking at the axis of the middle of this, looking up here, and looking, 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 then this will be the point. So we want it near to the tape at the top. So we have the space and then it's going to come in and this will be a rounded edge. And I'll show you what to do with that later. And then just imagine it going that way. We have tons more to do, just getting ourselves started. And then we're gonna go even further now into this zone like that. All right. Um, yeah, I feel like I should erase some stuff so that we're not confused. So we're going to erase here. We'll erase all of this stuff in there and there. And yep. And then I'll show you what it looks like erased. Okay, so I erased out all this stuff in there. I erased out this negative space. I erased up this stem and this stem. Um, I got rid of the southern helping line the one that came from here to there. And I got rid of the helping line inside the stems. Now, you may start being excited and wanna do details, but not yet, not yet. We gotta position the large scale parts of the mushrooms first, and then do all those little details. So get the big guy, the tall guy, and then we're gonna have the one that's in the front will be next, okay? So we still have this helping line here because we're gonna need it to posi position the one that's in the front. Uh, we have made this line come down here and now we're gonna measure another kind of um, triangle kind of thing happening. And it's gonna go there. So we have a little triangle here 
and then it's going to come across this little stem it's going to go way even over in front of this one you have that line there we want a nice point on this that's a shorter than this one so if this one's up here we got to go a little lower on this one and then have this one kind of flail out like that okay so we'll start with that see if this works we're going to find out in a second and we're going to come down to here we're going to go a short distance over so this line's going that way this will be the short distance over and so we're just a little bit over but we're going to be aiming for here so let's see i'll do a helping line because not all of that will be included we're going to come down the middle down the middle down the middle so there all right it seems like it's working all right and then we're going to go with the width so imagine this is the width we're using our x-ray vision now to see inside of that mushroom and see it gets it's a little narrow at the top gets a little wider at the bottom there we go and so they're in similar thicknesses okay kind of like how asparagus is sprout up quickly mushrooms sprout up quickly and have the thickness of the stems all right so we were on target yay we did this correctly okay and so this is going to come out and then it's going to have a little edge on it like that and two things are going to happen here so we're going to have We'll go a little down like this and let's do it about like this and more will happen in there too so now i'm going to erase inside of there because this one is our front mushroom this is the one in the front so i've erased everything that was inside of there because this is the front guy and instead of a fun guy he's a front guy haha <laughs> uh and this is the day everyone get ready you can boo me if you want this is the first time that even though a very good composition number is always odd numbered today we are only going to do four mushrooms um, and it's because nobody told these mushrooms to grow together in just three of them they grew four and they just look so good together and um so think of them as a family of four car shopping or something you know they they like they want to put the cooler in between the kids in the back seat when they go on vacation so that they don't touch each other and um so we're gonna have a family of four mushrooms we're not gonna have just three or five in this case so, yep, this is the day. It was bound to happen sooner or later. All right, so these three are definitely together. Then we're going to come way over here. So we're gonna have a broader, and we're gonna put a line here. So I'm kind of thinking about the distance that's left and putting more of an upward. So an upward mushroom he's got better posture he's just higher on the hill let's face it they're going down the moss hill so we got that one there and he is even with this one behind so and this one is not supposed to be so far off center and it is let me ponder this and get right back to you okay i know what i need to do so i measured down here to find the middle and yes i found the middle there but let's not do that. We want to go up to our helping line. It's there to help us after all and measure halfway there. So we need to go this way a little more so that we're under that. That's what went awry. Then we come down and then we move that way. Ah, oh, this is wonderful. Okay. All right. And then of course, when we head up, our tip will be here. and over yes all right that's the ticket so now i'll erase the parts that we don't need and you will see what it looks like there we have it okay now we get to go back and do details so i erased the stem that was in the wrong position i erased all this stuff out of there i tried to erase that stuff i've got some ghost lines but they'll go away when i shade so i did my best um and so now it is detail time so let's go back 
to focus on our big guy now. So our big guy, he's kind of funny because he gets like these little wrinkles. So here's the bottom of this and we're going to go for a little foldy edge. Um, and then, oh, this is so fun. Um, then we're going to go back over here to this edge and we're going to do a little wiggle and then go under our foldy edge up up and down below the helping line under the helping line here and this will be a little smaller there so we'll get rid of that because that's got a little too far all right so it kind of looks like somebody threw a pancake in the air and it landed on someone's baseball bat. I don't know. Uh, all right, so you got that. Then we're going to have lovely gills. So we're going to draw two lines at a time when we make our gills. Oh, this is so fun. Boop. Boop. All right. And we are under the helping line now. Let's see, there's going to be more under the helping line to there. And this is the last one that will be under the helping line to there. Okay. There's more under the helping line there. And I'm going to get my precision eraser to erase this helping line out now because we will, it will be not as helpful if it is still there. Um, and we'll erase that. Let me get that out. Right, all cleaned up and erased. Now, there's no more giant plus sign. I got rid of all of those. We don't need those anymore. And we're gonna get some gills. These gills are sideways. These ones we can't see because it's kind of flopping down. So we're gonna put what kind of looks like teeth in there. All right, this is the back side of the mushroom, which is why we see this part coming up inside. Um, so it'll be blurry in there. And then this like kind of wrinkle here where it folds up will continue on that side a little bit so it'll be a shadowy side all right then we have like gills coming straight at us so they'll be like this and these gills do not go all the way back to that line because they are going towards the middle and that's where they release their spores to make more mushrooms. Yay, mushrooms. Okay, lots of things eat mushrooms, not just us. Lots of animals enjoy mushrooms. All right, so those are kind of how the gills look from this side and then we'll just kind of do little fins inside because those are spaces in there like that um and we are going to create an edge now so that this will be connected to those fins so just kind of following here and somewhere back there it ends up being going in the other direction so we can maybe see like a little wrinkle there like that for seeing underneath and by the time you get over here you don't really see much of anything anymore so you just see the little tip all right so next we're going to take our precision eraser and erase there so that those parts become a whole part so this is what it'll look like after you erase so see how they kind of get all a little connected like that that's what we want to see under there and it's pretty much just the same over there now. All right, let's move on to mushroom number two. All right, so this one, we still have quite a lot more underneath parts to see. So we're going to find, here's the side of this mushroom overlapping. We're going to go down a little ways, like kind of where the stem is about here. And we're going to make it to this. We're going to stop here from here. And it goes like this. 
like that. So it's kind of, it, it reminds me of someone spinning in a skirt, like how it would go out and kind of flare a bit. And then this part right here will go in a little, and then this part right here will continue up to that. And I might exaggerate the height of it a little bit more because this is the one that's tall. And then I'll exaggerate that inward thing, okay? So you have this, and then we want to think about those glowing gills again. So this time we have a stem kind of in the depths, so it will be dark there. Uh, but we want to think about how everything is coming like this. So we've got there, there, till they reach like that. And then we can't see that side because that mushroom is in front. It's very helpful. So we got that to start with. And so now let's do a little bit of erasing. Let's erase the parts that went up high in front and clean up some things. Nice and clean. Um, this right here is probably too orderly. So we're going to need to come down a little farther and we're going to have it kind of overlap like this. So if this is the last one, like, outside, then it's going to kind of do this kind of overlay thing to get that, like, ribbed kind of effect right there. So, see, it's not straight necessarily. These, we're going to make sure they come this way if we didn't before so that they can come out. Little tricky. All right, so see how it has like kind of more of a scalloped edge to this kind of mushroom. Um, I'm not an expert in mushrooms. I don't know what this is. Don't eat it unless you know, okay? So now we'll erase and clean that out. That is now nice and cleaned out. So you can see it almost looks like a, a wing with feathers or something. So there it's nice and organized. Uh, but now, we have the thickness of the back, but this part just looks like thin paper. So we have to figure out how to get the gills on here, kind of like we did here. So let's start where the stem is and let's, let's just make this into letter H's for a while, kind of across that up and down, up and down. And that's probably far enough for our H's. So we'll do that and we'll go over there. All right, looks like Frankenstein, a Frankenstein mushroom. All right, and then let's erase in between the H's so that they are now not H's. Now they are just gaps. And now let's curve them at the bottom. Okay, and then, then let's just have them kind of go backwards. So these two will be the middle, so these will go this way, this way, this way, and these will go that way, like that. We will keep this line, because that's kind of the edge of the top part, and this is the gills coming out from the bottom. So now, over here, we're going to put diagonals going this way. And if we saw more of the mushroom, we would have them go that way. So now we got those guys. I'm not sure what's going on really close. Get that happening. Yep. And we're going to erase out of in between those edges, H's now. All right, so I'm erased out of the inside. And then these are going to head this way. All right, and any of these lines that are showing up in there, you want to clean those out. Clean them out. There we go. That looks really cool. Wait, wait, let me bend it so you see it better. There you go. So that's kind of what we got going on. All right, and now we're going to see a little bit more information up here. You can kind of guess because we have this line that we will have this kind of thing happening. Mm 
Okay, so that's all kind of leading up. Now someone put pleats in that skirt. Whew, that was a really good person ironing. I once did that. I was in a different country and had a dress that had tucks, but it did not have, it was not a pleated skirt dress. I took it to the cleaners there, and when I picked it up, someone had patiently ironed pleats into the whole thing. Um, I was amazed. Um, the dress was pressed, but I was not that impressed. I didn't want to wear the dress that way, per se, but I was amazed that they were able to do that. Whew. A lot of work went into that. Um, all right, so now we have bag mushroom, this mushroom. Now we're going to switch over to this mushroom. Okay, and this one has character. This one has a, is a mushroom with a cowlick. Yeah, so here's this part, which we only will get to see. It kind of looks like teeth for this part because it's in such bright light. And then we can see that it comes down a little more. And then it's going to go way up to here and back because this is like his little cowlick here. Part of it is just bend in there. Then we're going to start here and go to there and then open that up because that's inside the mushroom. And then these are more going that way. Oh, it has a little fair faucet wings on the side. That's what this is. She combed, that mushroom combed her hair to the side to have hair like fair faucet. And then these guys are going up in. And so I can tell the difference later. I'm just going to color in this triangle right here because it will be colored later. And I'm concerned that this is getting too complicated in there and that you need to be able to have that to see the difference. And then let's erase things. Here it is all erased. So <laughs> it literally looks like these are like tail feathers and this is little wing. Um, but these are all these little gills and they have to like open up to let the spores out. And then this part's coming down. When I erase the outline of the shape of the mushroom here, you can see a little gap. I'm not going to make this go up yet because there's a little teeny bit of gills from the other side that just kind of look bright in the space. And then this line comes down. Um, so then I can make the line connect. Huh? We drew that on purpose, but I thought it was lint. I was like, how did they get there? But nope, we need that there. You'll see better in the shading side of things. All right, so now on this side, these little guys go this way, and then they just kind of create a little kind of like edge, where it's not perfectly straight. And then there's a few little hanging down, like three little gills hanging down like sagging gills right there. It must be full of spores, okay? All right, woohoo, this looks good. Nothing else unique at this point. We're ready for our last guy, yay! All right, so when I move this one over, I like the top, I'm gonna keep the top, uh, but I'm gonna go ahead and let it be behind this one so that when this comes out, I'm gonna kind of Go up and back down for that side of things. I'm going to extend this up into the cap. And then we're going to see lines heading this way and that way. And then the back edge will be a little bit more wiggly to there. And then we'll erase this helping line, which was just when we sketched the general shape. We're gonna erase that out. And then we'll be ready for shadowy things. And there's the last one, all erased. Oops, I missed the line right there, didn't I? Yep, I did. All right, so let's get that. Now, Everything is all right. Okay, so now we're ready to do shading and details. Woohoo! There's our family of four Little mushrooms shopping for a nice, reasonable sedan. All right. 
We are now ready for shading and things like that. More details. Um, and I have to say, I was confused why when I was erasing, like, I was like, what's going on? Why did I press harder? Is it because I wanted to show up really good on the video for you? And I accidentally picked up an HB instead of a 2B. Um, so, sorry, that that probably won't happen with a 2B as much. So, 2Bs are softer. They show up darker, but they're a little easier to erase than the HBs or the Hs. Uh, so I have my 2B out, and you can see my 2B is quite short. And so I have this fun uh, extender to make my short 2B be nice and long again and last longer and feel nice. All right. Okay, so first off, just large scale color where it goes. So I'm just going to take our pencil, blah, 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 see the direction, just going to kind of color some different... Yep, there and there and there. We're gonna go under here. This is definitely gonna be a shadowy space. And there, definitely shadowy on the stem under there, but not the gills yet. Color, 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 color. And oh yeah, this little crevice is the dark a dark spot. So we're gonna go this way a little bit to get it to be more bold. And then line it up with his little directional marks. Mm, some shadow from him. Oh, it's very dark under here. That part. And looks like from here up. Directional lines that way. Okay, I'm gonna get some here. All right, these lines will come in handy later. They will go away and then they will come back. Repetition, repetition is good in art. Very good in art. Okay, then we're going to color inside of here a little bit. Kind of the right corners of those guys. Create depths, depths, and then it's kind of right under. Oh, I'm gonna put some shadow on our stem here. Up and down, up and down, inside of there. Oh, maybe a little more here. Coloring, coloring, coloring. A little more on this side. I know it's like, you know I'm going to have you blend this in a second, and then you're going to be like, but now where is it? All right, and we get the shadow from this guy being cast on this stem. We got a shadow from being cast from its very own stem. Or cap, I should say, capish. This is casting a shadow here, and this is also casting a shadow here. Okay, and then this one is casting a shadow under there. Interesting. It's gonna do a shadow like that over here. How interesting is that? Oh, and then these are shadows under here. There's more light on this stem. All right, so we got those in place, and we might as well just start doing more. See, I'm holding my pencil different, so it helps me not to get lost on those. Am I doing it right? I don't know. Look at the difference between this and that other one. So, yeah, I will retrace this with this in a loose manner. And, oh, by the way, from this point on, 
Don't erase smudges. We're just gonna turn the smudges into things. When we need to erase, we'll do that. I'll tell you, now is the erasing time. So let the smudges happen. It's kind of why I'm not being careful and like stopping and doing something amazing already. I'm like, see, evenly putting color everywhere, not just in one place. This is dark down there. It'll be dark in there to there. Right. You can see I got on some stuff. It's gonna be okay. And ah, oh, my negative space. That was like do that. Okay, so I've got a lot and lots of places. Now before I proceed, I'm going to retrace everything with this darker pencil, which I'm not sure you would have to do if you started with a 2B to start with, but oh! No, oh, this wasn't a good choice today. Oh, so sorry that happened. All right, so I'm going to trace all the outsides of things again. Okay, that's much better because I basically just re-outlined everything. So now you can see it a lot better. You can see all my wiggle lines. All right, so now I did large scale shading and now I need to come back and more carefully get in between things so that it gets darker and lets these mushrooms kind of glow a little bit brighter against the background. So I did the large scale. So see how I'm carefully coloring up next to them in the dark zones. I'm still trying to keep this kind of side angle because if the mushrooms are going this way, if I make marks going that way, then they can stand out more. Plus it has this feeling of light coming from over here. Um, so anyway, I'm going to spend some time coloring right neatly next to those mushrooms. So you can see that I went around all my mushrooms with the dark shadow from the sky. The big loose marks that I made going in that direction were helpful for me to know where um, the darkness would be. So I've left some interesting, more lighter colors, but also it was helpful to know the direction that I'm coloring. So even if I'm on this side of the mushroom, I'm coloring in this direction to match these marks. If I'm on this side of the mushroom, I'm matching the direction of the mark. Even here, these are going this way and these are going this way. So that is a direction that I've chosen for the background. No matter if you're on this side or this side, it's still going in that direction. So um, feel free to spend some time going in that direction. And then we're going to make some of the places like a little lighter. So I'm gonna go next to this same direction, less pressure, um, and kind of create the gradation effect here. that and that so it's just a lighter gray and here a lighter gray same direction though same direction and notice like when I crossed over onto my mushrooms not concerned about that so you don't don't even look at this eraser or this eraser like at this point just get color on your paper the hard work is getting it on there not getting it off so if it gets in the wrong spot or where you didn't intend to, don't worry, it'll all work out. We'll close this up with lighter, lighter, and a lighter color down there, and a lighter color around here. This is probably just something off in the distance that's not in focus, but it makes it more interesting. 
and having it be solid. There we go. Nice. Same direction. Just created a different amount of pressure. So more pressure in the corner. Less pressure here. Definitely more pressure close to our mushrooms so they stand out. And there's the little bits there. Okay, now we've got our little smudges. So you saw me kind of scribble these guys in, right? So let's just have fun kind of coloring in. Now, let me think, do I want to do direction on this? Mm, no, it doesn't matter so much. So I'm just going to go in little circles to color in parts of these scribbles to make them darker. Huh, I accidentally have a star there. That's pretty, pretty cool. Mm -hmm. Get a little, almost some heart shapes just by accident. It's kind of fun. So you want variable darks and lights in our little mosses. Keep the edges kind of glowy. add some more. Again, I'm back to my 2B, so I'm much happier. Oof. I was like, I don't understand. What's wrong today? I was like, is it humidity? Can that affect? No, it wasn't humidity. It was just the wrong pencil. All right, so there's our scribbles. Yay! All right, and then we're going to put more darkness inside our mushroom places. So I'm going to get Dark, dark, dark inside of there. See, different directions. This is for, oh, what have I done? All right, that's this guy, so I'm going the wrong way. Okay, good thing I stopped myself or I might actually have to touch that eraser. And then you'd be like, you told me to put it away, Miss Elaine. All right, so here we go, we got that. Good, good, because that's going up to that direction. Good, and that back that way and that way. I'm gonna do some more little little lines. It looks like rain almost. Kind of reminds me of rain. Let's see. Yep. Well, we might be ready for spring showers pretty soon. This. Anyway, and then under this mushroom, because this guy's in the back, he is the darkest. But we want to follow his directionality. So that we don't suddenly think we're dealing with this guy here. The sky as opposed to this guy. T-H-E-S-K-I as opposed to T-H-I-S-G-U-Y. This guy. <laughs> Very confusing. Sounds the same. Yes. Okay. So now we're ready to get our paper stump out. Yay. It has been a while since we've used our paper stump. So um, remember the paper stump puddle idea. So we have a lot of pencil on our paper. So first off, it's just going to be easy. Let it land, pick it up, press the edge of the point on the side there so we don't make our point actually go away and follow the direction of our sketches. So just 
kind of go like that. So that's the easy way. There's pencil there. We just move it around. Okay, again, keep the erasers far, far away. We're, we're not using them yet. Okay, they're over there. We're gonna keep doing this. All right, now, if you find, oh no, I didn't put enough pencil. Then you can add more pencil. I will not be upset with you if you're like, I did not put enough. And so you can add more there. And then from memory's sake, uh, you can always make a pencil puddle like this. Pencil puddle. Because then you can pick up some of it and stick it in new places from your puddle. Because this is just paper. There's no color on this except for that you get from someplace else like that, okay? So if it's brand new, um, you might want to spend some time in a paper puddle, make it look nice and seasoned like a cast iron skillet. So you got some on there to move around. All right, so, so now I'm going to do this on my whole background, keeping that same diagonal motion in the background as I go. So I have been going in the diagonal direction. I have not been going over my mushroom caps though. I've like tried to put my bricks on. Sometimes it goes a little bit across the line. Not a problem if you go a little bit over, but don't obliterate your mushrooms. That, that would not be fun. You'd be like, oh. you just make it harder on yourself if you do that. So I mean, it's not the end of the world. You could still recover, but let's not do that. Okay, so we went in this direction, this way, this way, this way, this way, this way in all of these places. All right, so next, down here in these bits. Um, so we drew them with scribbled, so let's let's blend them with scribbles. Blend, 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 scribble, scribble, scribble. Blend, 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 blend. Moss is not the main characters today. We're just gonna kind of mush those up. There, that looks good, all right. Then the stems go up and down, up and down, up and down, up and down, up and down. And down. That was a sneaky one right there, right? Oh, yes. And actually, I forgot to put some more color in there. So let's... I don't think I even traced them when I found out I had the wrong pencil. So let's do that and let's put some darkness in there like that for those little caps. Yeah, much better, much better. All right. Okay, so now we will start doing the shading upon our mushroom. So we have this part of our cap going this way and this way. And we're going to shade inside all these little gills. We're going to shade going this way. Yep, and this way, then this way, then this way, then this way. And this way. And you're like, everything shaded. That's because we're, we're waiting for the use of our erasers. You'll be very pleased when we finally get to use them. And if you use them too soon, you'll be disappointed because they will affect it. And you'll be like, oh, that's what she meant. Um, so um, if you want, you can make two and then do the opposite of what I say on one of them and then do it with my recipe for this one. And then um, give us feedback on what what other things we might end up with. Because remember, I'm only telling you one way, not the way. There are lots of other, other ways to do things, but I think this will be suitable for this lesson today. So I've kind of followed those mushroom shapes. I think that's a leftover line from when I was using the wrong, and it's quite dark and shadowy. I could just see frog and toad like hanging out under there going on a little walk or something. All right, so next. Finally, it's time to get our precision eraser. All right, so you don't want it out here like this where it's all floppy and can break off. So I like to move, move it back in all the way and then go one, two, so it's out. And then you can clean it on your table to make sure that there's no bits on it. All right, because now we'll start up here. We're going to put a highlight on the very top of everybody. They all get a highlight on the top. Very fun. Okay. 
then they're all gonna get a highlight on the edge. Even this guy that's in the shadow zone has a highlight on this edge that goes into the shadow zone. Look at that, very cool, all right. Shadow, no, highlight. <laughs> the camera goes off, the camera comes on, and everything on the edges is erased. So um, I did the curves, I went, so if you imagine that this is a racetrack all the way around behind, I went all around the edge, but with more details, erasing the edges, erasing the edges, erasing the edges. Oh, look, I have an edge back there to get. All right, erasing the edges of the mushrooms all the way around, okay? So on the caps, all the way around the curve there and all around the top up there, okay? By the way, you can have a brush to do this sort of thing if you want. I just, I'm using my hands. Look how, look how much graphite is on my hands. Uh, by the way, if you don't get enough graphite here when you erase, there won't be enough contrast. You won't notice a difference. You'll be like, I don't understand why her shows up so well. So put more so that you can erase and see it. So now I'm gonna get the edges glowy on these mushrooms next to the sky in some places. So we got that. And yes, remember this little, we added a little line for his little bend there. And then we added a line for his little bend there. And then this is gonna go a little farther up on this side, but not on that side. Okay, and there. All right, oh, and in this shadow, there's still a highlight on the inside of that one. All right, then I'm gonna make these kind of look a little bit like thatched roofs, the way that the glowy lines are gonna come up. Aiming at the top and up, 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 up. So see how I change the direction there? All these lines from here are pointing at the top. So how they go up like that. And not under there, but under here. Okay. Oh, that looks cool. That's looking very good. I think it's a little, bit, a little bit out of there. This is definitely glowy. I think I erased the line when I did that um, to get that nice and glowy and get all these little fins nice and glowy. But we'll get that in a second because this lesson is all about what comes next. <laughs> okay. So now we're going to erase up and down. on the stems and see how I didn't go higher than that shadow because remember that shadow's there and this kind of creates those parallel lines create that gap there for what happens and then the shadow the, this will be the shadow side of that okay all right so then we have a shadow here and then we have more of a highlighty line there and remember we're talking about shadow a reflected light light shining on it here lines there. Then we talked about how this one was shaped like that. And there's the most light on this mushroom stem. And plant light. All right. That's how those look. Very cool. And then we have our mosses. And our mosses are not in focus, but we're just gonna find the tips of things that we didn't color in. We're gonna give some highlight edges, just like there are shadow edges. So we'll have highlights on some mosses. Like They're sticking up their little, I don't know. What are parts of moss called? Are they leaves? Are they buds? Are they... At any rate, we are going to make some little highlights on them. Alright, so we got that going on. Oh boy, oh boy. Okay, so we got a lot of the, of the highlight details. Just, uh, I, think, I think we're good. Oh, I mean, it looks like there's a little bit more of a highlight right here on the stem, right there. And I gotta be more careful going around things to the stem right there. All right, yes. Okay, 
Now there's this guy that we use too when we erase things. Uh, but I'm also going to go back in some of the places and use just the side edge or just the side of it to kind of create remember those places that were a little lighter in our picture to get the direction some light kind of interesting light right it's not a boring background there that's good enough i don't want to go crazy and if you don't if it stands out too much we just rub it away and make it like dimmer again all right okay so you may be wondering why are we back to graphite well pencil is always lovely but we're back to graphite right now because we just ended doing things with micron pens. We're not going to do a micron pen. We're going to get our pencil. We're going to sharpen it really well now. And then you'll see why we're doing it. I have a very sharp pencil. I have a basic picture with the highlights and the shadows and all the shapes in place. And now we want to think micron pen. All right. So that means lines that we do not erase. We do not blend them. We want it to be cool and loose, just like we were micron pinning it. If it was ink, how fun is that? So get all these little. So probably before I get done all doing all these little things, I will have to sharpen my pencil again, right? Because you want to be able to have that nice point that micron pens have and pencil itself wears off. And of course, this little eraser right here is like the equivalent of your white gel pen. So if you need little dots of white, that's what that one's for, right? So I'm going to keep the camera on longer so you can see all the little things I will do with this one. More cross-hatching there. 